Hello there. Welcome to Help Learn Asia. My name is Akash and in this module you will learn about managing your corporate blog. So throughout promoting your blog, you'll find many related or interactive modules such as viewership where we talk about uh, RSS where we talk about permanent links etc. We've covered these because more technical aspects of online marketing are best learned through doing rather than reading. So let's get started and we'll talk about promoting your blog. Let's first start about start talking about the basic methods to do it. Other than the modern way where people use a lot of social media, first let's look at the basic functions which blogging supports for you to promote it. First thing is permanent links or rather which is more common in the blog world as perma links. What perma links are basically links to the blog post which are permanent so you can use that link to promote it whenever and wherever you want to. So think about this, you have a blog where you're display, displaying the first 10 posts on your home page and then after that it, it becomes an archive. So how, how would you send someone directly to a post which is not on your home page? So that's where permalink comes in. And since we've suggested you to use WordPress, I'll show you how WordPress actually uses permalinks and how it makes it really easy for you to go about it. So a great thing about WordPress is when you create a post, it automatically creates the permalink for you and it uses the title of the post to create the permalink. So let's say I want to create a new post. I'll go here and add a new post and I'll put a title as hello world, right? And let me just save the draft. So you see immediately a permalink has been created for me. So this is the link where this post will show up, right? So you see and followed by the year, the month, the date, and the name of your, the post name, basically the title of your post. And the good thing here is it automatically uses the title of the post. So make sure you use your keywords and other things while you're promoting and you're doing SEO while writing blog posts. So that's obviously a helpful thing here. So if you see all the other posts, every post would actually have its own permalink. So let me just show you another one. For example, this one, the permanent link is already created for you. So if you view the post from this link, you would be taken to the post where you can actually see the post. And that's the link which you're going to be using for your blog, right? So that's, that's permanent link for permalinks for you. It's automatically handled by WordPress. So you don't have to do anything. This, what we're using for this one is for this demo here, it's a wordpress.com hosted WordPress site. So if you go to wordpress.com and you, you create a site, this is what you would see. But if you're going to be hosting your own WordPress server, then you have more flexibility around it because then you can actually change the structure of the link. You can, let's say, omit the year and the month and the date and you can directly have the blog URL followed by the post name. Or you can also create your own format where you want to put in just the year and then the blog post name. That's possible. So that's another flexibility that you get in terms of managing your permalink. So how would you use this permalink? permalink? Well, permalinks are basically used. You can use it in social media. You can take those links and put it around your social, social media such as Facebook, tweet it out or even put it up on your LinkedIn. You can use a lot of other ways to promote this. Apart from that, you can also use it in multiple ways. Let's say you're sending out a newsletter and you want to link it to a particular blog post talking about something. Again, you'll use the permalink. You, it's better always use the permalink so that the user is directly taken to that blog post and rather than to the home of your blog where he might have to look for the blog post. Right. So that's how permalink works. It's a very easy to use thing and it, it's very powerful because it's, it's think of it as a page for that particular post. So that's, that's how it works. Moving on, another great thing with another traditional thing is an RSS feed. So you would have heard, definitely heard of RSS feeds. What RSS is, is it stands for Rich Simple Site Summary. Think of it as a summary of the site in a standardized format which is used throughout the web for maybe crawlers and different sites to 
understand different blocks in a same standardized format. So how is that useful? Firstly, for a blog, for example, a blog post like this one. Whenever you are using WordPress, it creates your own permalink. That's the great thing about WordPress. Sorry, it creates your own RSS feed. So the URL for that would be your blog URL slash feed. So again, so a great thing about WordPress is that it creates your own RSS feed. You do not have to manually create it. Unless you want to change your RSS feed, you want to format it, you want to gain control of it, then there are a lot of plugins available for you which allow you to do that. You can definitely go to the plugin section and search for them. But by default, if you go to your blog URL slash feed, that's the link for your default RSS feed for your blog. So you see it's it's a XML formatted uh, document which has the a lot of details such as the date when it was published, the author, the content of it, the categories, etc. So this makes it easier for standard uh, crawlers and other directories for, for them to basically read your blog content. Now, how is an RSS feed helpful? There are two to three ways in which it helps. Firstly, let's talk about getting perm backlinks. So there's a lot of RSS feed direct directory out there which basically where you go sign up and enter the link of your RSS feed. So they would cr just crawl it every day or maybe once in two, three days. So you don't have to keep going there back again and again to submit your new blog post. The RSS feed is automatically updated whenever you make a blog post. So those uh, directories would automatically pull all your new blog posts and create backlinks this way you can create backlinks automatically to your site that's a great way to do it secondly a lot of people actually use rss reader to easily read content of the web so let's say i want to read a few blogs which i am interested in so there's one way where you would sign up the persons and then you send him an email newsletter kind of a thing or a email uh, once a week telling him about all your new posts or people prefer using what is called an RSS reader where they would subscribe to a lot of different blogs so they would basically use your blog's feed URL put it in the reader and then it, every time there's a post that reader would automatically show it to them in a very nice beautiful format in which they the user likes it so that it's easy for him to consume that particular post which you are writing so that's another great way it would help you to be in touch with your readers in a easier way they don't have to keep coming back all the time and for creating backlinks so these are two of the different things one is permalinks and then there's rss feed apart from that again social media is definitely the thing people do use social media to promote their blogs uh, they would also use a lot of different formats. For example, Technorati is one of the uh, syndication site for blogs. So you should, it's good if you could go there and sign up and then link your blog there. So that it would basically collect all the content again via the feed or any other format of your blog and it will host it. So it's again good to get backlinks and get traffic. And as for social media Always post your blog post on your Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, etc. That will help you to drive more traffic to your blog. So that's about it. That's this post on this. Thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you next time for another lesson on online marketing here at Help Learn Asia.